One of the longest running animated sitcoms, Family Guy's Griffin Family has been through all sorts of ridiculous situations, as well as totally irrelevant cutaway gags. Waiter, there's a dead guy in my soup. The show has undergone a lot of changes over the years. In fact, some of the characters have gotten progressively more evil, while others have mellowed out quite a bit. Thank you, I will take that and give you a spoon because you're a dumb baby. From Stewie dropping most of his world domination goals, to Brian becoming progressively more pretentious, to everyone's increasing amount of hate towards Mick. <laughs> But where do these characters fall on the morality scale? Who's the best and who's the worst? Let's find out. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is Family Guy Good to Evil. Damn you, vile woman! And full disclosure, today we're gonna be focusing on mostly core characters on the show. Sorry, greased up naked deaf guy. You're never gonna catch me! We'll throw in some curveballs, but we'll tackle the best one off characters on another day. Perhaps all the Family Guy villains or celebrity characters. Let us know what we should do for a follow up episode in the comment section below. Also, yeah, almost every character on the show does some wildly over the top misdeed, so this one was actually a bit tough to organize. After much thought, we decided that the gold medal for good should go to Ida, formerly Dan Quagmire. Oh yum, I hope they're the kind with the bone removed. A war hero and loving father, she's a mess of emotion when we first meet her. But I am a woman trapped in a man's body. She kept her desire to be a woman a secret from her family and wound up having an unhappy marriage because of it. He threw up when he found out you were a monster. We know from Glenn that his mother was a mess growing up, but Ida can hardly be blamed for her ex's behavior while she was serving in the US Army. Could you put him back so I can push him out again? She tries her best to be there for her son and be patient when he's initially uncomfortable with the change. She also makes a point to discuss Peter's sex change after the father of the Griffin family begins to regret the transition. The fact that Ida is calm and upfront with Peter, waiting until he comes to the conclusion he's unhappy on his own, says a lot about what kind of person she is. I feel really awful. I'm a really bad person for what I did. She knows everyone has a journey they must travel, but they also need to be called out when dishonest. You've taken a journey. It just took becoming a woman to make you a better man. Her reasoning she gives Kevin when he deserts shows how loyal and straightforward she is. You walked out on those men, and that's what's most unforgivable. Our silver medal for good goes to Bruce. I see a lot of smiles here in this room. There's one. He's one of those characters who's mainly there for a quick laugh. His soft voice and odd mannerisms are easy to tease. I asked you what your name was. Honey, you keep that up. It's whatever you want it to be. But he does show an understanding of why people behave the way they do. Despite being a bit odd, he's very personable and nice to everyone he meets. He's not really confrontational, and his worst deed is lying about his age to his partner, Jeffrey. You said you was 39. I was just trying to get you in bed. Next on the list, we're giving the bronze medal of good to Jillian. This guy named Hitler? Somebody should stop him. Not the brightest bulb in the box, to say the least. I mean, Brian was able to distract her by shining a flashlight on a wall. That said, she's one of the sweetest characters on the show. She's determined to find love, and despite being pulled away by Brian for so long, she eventually does. He also speaks orange. Mandarin, honey. Mandolin. It's a shame she's disregarded as nothing more than a pretty face for as long as she had been, but she did show resolve not running back to Brian. I'm sorry, but I'm in love with Derek now. The evil monkey is next. Originally, a weird and hilarious twist on the thing in my closet plot, he's shown to be a broken and insightful character. He even explains that he wasn't always unapproachable, having been hurt after finding his wife cheating on him with another monkey. I got home from work one day and found my wife cheating on me with another monkey. He makes an effort to get along with Chris, helping him with his homework and trying to form an almost fatherly bond. He's actually a well-intentioned creature and we eventually get to see the good in him once he reveals it to Chris. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Moving on to Jerome, what can we say about this guy? He's a loving single father, a respectable business owner, and an overall good friend. 
even when Peter tried to run him off and set his house on fire. Jerome still was the bigger man and forgave him. We cool, Peter, we cool. In the episode Babies Got Black, he does have issues with his daughter being in an interracial relationship with Chris. But after a moment of introspection towards the end of the episode, he apologizes for overreacting and gives the two his blessing. If these kids want to date, then I guess that's okay with me. There was also that time he brutally beat up Peter, but in his defense, Peter did trash the clan. Moving on, we have Joe Swanson. Unhappy with his marriage and his career, he still tries to find the good things in life. It's tragic he got to the point where he wanted to take his own life, but we're glad he found purpose again saving the lives of his friends. That was amazing. You saved us. He isn't necessarily the best guy in the world, willing to leave Bonnie and even cheating on her with a young officer. Did you bring protection? Oh, don't worry, nothing comes out of the front. But he also tries to better himself as much as possible. He strives to uphold the law, shows forgiveness to Meg for her obsessive behavior, and even forgives his friends for abandoning him when he was completely paralyzed. It's alright guys, I'm just glad to be back on my feet. It's also worth noting that Joe's character was significantly different in earlier seasons. When he first moves into the neighborhood, he's incredibly well liked instead of ridiculed and impresses everyone in town with his heroic stories as a police officer. But even in later seasons, Joe is always there for Peter and his friend, even though his disability has become a constant butt of a joke. Cripple, 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 cripple. Brian's cousin, Jasper, is next. Incredibly stereotypical and loud, as well as over-the-top dramatic, he's incredibly nice and pleasant with everyone he meets. Everybody, this is Ricardo from the Philippines and my kitchen floor. He's also loyal to Brian, allowing him to crash at his place in LA whenever needed. That said, he also told Brian not to let Stewie know he was a brilliant playwright. Do whatever you have to do, Brian, but never let him know he's got talent. There's a difference between not putting pressure on a kid and flat out crushing their dreams. Still, Jasper seems way more fun and positive to be around than Brian. Next up is Brian's replacement, Vinny. I'm just a regular guy. You throw a stick, maybe I bring it back. A mafia-type mentality, he can be crude and vulgar, but we'll say he's just got a bit of a rough exterior. It's sad that he lost his owner, and that once Stewie went back to save Brian, he would have stayed in that shelter even longer. If I save Brian, my family won't get another dog. We see how it hurts him seeing Stewie cry about their first Christmas without Brian, and even makes the effort to make the transition easier for Stewie, dressing like a professor to sound like Brian, and even giving Stewie an early present. Sort of. That was supposed to go to somebody else, I'm very sorry. All that said, we give Vinny points for the heartfelt goodbye scene before going back in time to save Brian. Vinny sacrifices everything so that Stewie can go back and stop Brian's death. You're what? Of course I'm alive. What the hell's going on here? Right after he pets him on the head one last time, Stewie says, Good dog, Vinny. Good dog, Vinny. Good dog. And we agree. Moving on, ranking above the rest of his family is Chris Griffin. Ah! my morning scream. At the beginning of the show, he's shown as a typical dumb lug, but as the show progresses, he expresses he has a lot of patience and kindness. Hey, he did it. That isn't to say his hands are clean of any wrongdoing. He's unstable to a large degree, ripping out his hair by the handful, purposely giving himself nosebleeds, robbing his neighbors to make a doll for himself, listening to Charles Manson's music, and having dozens of tabs of vulgar videos open all at once. Plus, pursuing and alluding to desiring odd incestuous relationships with the women in his family, the list goes on. He often allows himself to be treated horribly just because he doesn't want to make a fuss. He finds happiness a few times, even getting into a relationship with Taylor Swift. But he's the kind of guy who is willing to step aside if he thinks he isn't fit to be with someone. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of girls for you. His sister, Meg Griffin, is next. She was a little tricky to place, since she clearly has issues she's dealing with, but they all can be traced back to the side effects of years of neglect and abuse from not only her family, but nearly everyone she encounters. Oh, I wonder what he's dreaming about. Shut up, Meg. She does eventually stand up for herself, but quickly regrets doing so. She notes how everyone began lashing out at each other, and allows herself to continue being abused just to keep the peace. Yes, making fun of Meg is hilarious in the context of such a goofy and ridiculous cartoon, but if we really analyze things... <laughs> 
Robotching this guy. The fact that Meg showcases as much good as she does is actually pretty incredible. You're such a good listener. You're not like the other boys. All of the abuse that's thrown her way would likely turn anyone else into a very spiteful person. Moving on to one of Peter's friends, Cleveland. A lot can be said about Cleveland. No, 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 no! and will eventually go into depth for The Cleveland Show in another episode. He's needy, he's impulsive, and he goes with the crowd even if the crowd is clearly in the wrong. Giggity. What? Not then, it's stupid. But he does get the short end of the stick on more than one occasion, being stabbed by Peter to get them out of a jail cell, and being cheated on by his wife with one of his closest friends. Apologize? I cheat on you and you apologize to me? But he also was willing to cart Joe around on a baggage cart to see Niagara Falls despite Joe having a breakdown. Went to Korea to hunt down the last episode of a soap opera while Donna was dealing with the death in her family and helps commit Joe after he's fully paralyzed. So I brought something to read to you. It's the word search from the Sunday Circular. What we will say is he's protective of his family and takes the fall after Peter accidentally shoots Cleveland Jr. Peter didn't shoot my son. I did. And in the grand scheme of things, Cleveland is an incredibly loyal friend, especially given how many times Peter's shenanigans has destroyed his house. Our favorite movie fanatic, Carl, is next. I put a crawler in the Jerry's Kids jar. I thought that'd be funny. Relatively harmless, he spends most of his time either watching movies or talking about them. We have to talk about every scene. The worst thing that he's done is fire Meg when she was annoying him after promoting Chris ahead of her simply because Chris could talk about films with him. Carl, this isn't fair. All right then, you're fired. What? On to Ollie Williams, a man of few words, literally. It's gonna rain. He's a demanding and arrogant guy. He's not a horrible person, but because he can no longer speak in full sentences due to his large alcohol consumption throughout his life, he keeps his words to the point. Who's your favorite musician, Ollie? Cher! He doesn't even like Cher. It makes him come off as strict and unapproachable. Next, we have Carol. She's not the worst person on the planet, but she can be harmful in her own way. She falls in love too quickly and seems to find any excuse for it not to work, teetering between wanting to be with someone and being afraid of having her heart broken. Well, I would never miss any of your meet the fiance dinners. She does settle down with Adam West, but she is also shown to have cheated on him, seeing another mayor. I almost didn't recognize you without my special sauce all over your face. One could argue that she's not hurting anyone else, but try saying that to the long string of suitors she's left behind, as well as her family who always have to help her put herself back together. Are you sure? I mean, look at your track record. Nine divorces. Next, we have Neil Goldman, a huge nerd. He's done some really shady things in the past, such as using Meg when his family buys her. According to the contract, every night you have to put on my pajamas. But he's also shown to value Chris and their new friendship over a girl. I'm sorry, Meg, but my friendship with Chris is more important. Now, he's definitely creepy and obsessive, but that personality trait was definitely diminished quite a bit since early earlier seasons. Cecilia thinks my psoriasis is sexy. We can't forget the giant chicken. At first, he's just used as an excuse to animate a fight scene now and again, causing a lot of collateral damage in the process. But since his creation, he has tried numerous times to get on civil terms with Peter, only getting angry when Peter starts another fight. His worst deed, aside from handling things with his fists, or wings, would be his shady interactions with Lois. It's easy to see he's attracted to her and is just being passive with his advances. Us redheads have to stay together, right? Whether he actually feels something for her, or if he just wants to hurt Peter though, remains to be seen. And let's not forget, he also gave Peter that expired coupon which started the whole beef. Chicken, gave me a bad coupon. Ah! Let's throw in Bonnie next. She's shown often as calm and loving, but also to be struggling with a lot of regrets. I knew what to expect after, you know, Joe's accident and... She kisses Brian after revealing that she wanted so much more out of life, but had to put it down to look after Joe. On the darker side of things, she eventually shoots Joe to re-cripple him after Joe becomes a jerk. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. I was aiming for your spine. Tom Tucker is next. When you're on TV, it makes sense to take a lot of pride in your appearance, though Tom does take it too far with posing into spoons. 
You can't help but feel bad for him when he's falsely accused of killing people or when his career flopped due to Peter ditching him for James Woods. You're dropping me as a client? Yeah, I just heard it on the news. But he's also judgmental, has no sensitivity for sick children, and is a vicious co-worker who doesn't care when the town thinks Neil will jump from City Hall. Hey, have that cartoon sound effect guy cue up the... It honestly might be time for him to retire and learn not to be so full of himself. And he's also a horrible father, neglecting his son to the point where Jake himself is becoming a terrible person. The student has been sentenced to 200 hours of community service and is a very bad boy. Next, we have Cleveland Jr. For those that have watched the beginning of Family Guy and The Cleveland Show, you know this character has undergone some design changes. Please pick up this knife. Ah, he's got a knife! Once an incredibly annoying little kid with far too much energy, he's now an incredibly lazy but highly intelligent teen. We don't see much of him once his family moves back to Quahog, but he does make it clear after Peter accidentally shoots him that he will be getting payback. The fact that he waits to announce this until there are no other witnesses just shows he is purposely keeping his dad in the dark about what he's truly capable of. Just so you know, I'm gonna be coming for your ass. Despite being in the same universe as American Dad, we have to place Santa higher for this cast. Well, can you be a good boy? He's a man worn to exhaustion due to the constant demands of the public, and you can't help but feel sorry for the condition his life is in. Please, put me out of my misery. Now, it doesn't justify allowing his elves to be worked to death or for allowing his reindeer to become feral monsters, but it does make sense why he holds resentment for much of the population. And the reindeer eat them which has turned the reindeer into wild, feral creatures. He does make Peter's life miserable after Peter uses his own Santa costume to get free stuff, but we feel it was an understandable reaction. Whose suit are you wearing? Your suit! Whose suit? Your suit! It's your suit! I mean, imagine being as overworked as this guy. You wouldn't be so jolly either. Let's move on to Cleveland's new wife, Donna. Since she isn't given too much time on the show, there aren't all that many great moments. Now, we're not saying that she was wrong about Lois not disciplining her children properly. Stay away! You get down from there this instant! Munch me, f We just don't think it's appropriate to spank your neighbor's child. And it certainly isn't okay to abuse your husband, let alone just for disagreeing with you. And Cleveland, I forbid you from ever talking to Peter again! Next is the maid, Consuela. She does things on her own terms, which makes her extremely pushy to whoever is employing her. She's inconsiderate, making it clear she doesn't mind making others uncomfortable so long as she gets her way. I... no... no... I have no money. And she even goes as far as to almost hold Stewie hostage in her home. This is so messed up right now. Now we have Trisha Takanawa, a driven woman she's willing to do anything to further her career, even have sex on the local news just to expose men like Carter. This has been Trisha Takanawa with my undercover expose of- She is good at her job and does expose Carter for using unsafe materials, but during her time dating him, she allows Carter to have Babs put in a mental institution and takes to abusing Peter to make him act the way she wants. Sanitarium? Yeah, I told her I was leaving her and she freaked out for no reason. We can give some leeway, since Trisha is obviously abused by her own mother, never being good enough even when nominated for a local Emmy. You know what for Channel 10? Just Channel 5! Only half as good! Mayor Adam West is next on our list. My god! I'm a tomato! Like a lot of public officials, he's been the focus for a lot of rumors and scandals. He came down on gay marriage just to distract people from the Diggum statue he built. From taxpayers' money, by the way. This press conference is over. I can't see you now, I can't hear you now. He had an affair with Meg, who was underage. He stabbed another mayor in the eye just because he thought he had to fight for Carol's affection. He's just an unstable guy. He may have been voiced and based on the legendary Adam West, but that doesn't really excuse the character from being dangerous. He even admits to being well aware of how horrible he is to Cleveland when exposed for acting crazy just to hide his criminal behavior. Old crazy harmless mayor. Quack, quack. But we will say that Mayor West is clearly crazy, so perhaps many things he does truly are with the best intentions. Mort Goldman is next. 
A businessman and now a single dad, he's only gotten worse as the series went on. He accepts buying Meg to pay off Peter's bill, and even commits insurance fraud. But the good news is your insurance will be covering all of your damages. He's someone who's constantly complaining and seems to have a pretty bleakly negative view on life. And it's shown time and time again that Mort is cowardly and spineless. Next up, we have Olivia. She's able to achieve her dreams of being a child actor, but she doesn't use it for the better. Fame does corrupt people, and we know from her first appearance that she's pushed by her mother to perform. I've always dreamed of becoming an actress. But the manipulation and violence she picked up on her own. She's cunning and will do anything to be successful, even if it means splitting up a once great team and replacing them. I think you and I should kick Stewie out. And I'll take his place. Lois's mother Babs is next and a bit tough to rank, mainly because she's really just a bit of an enabler for her husband Carter. That said, she does actually express interest and affection for her grandkids, unlike Carter. And although she seems completely fine with most of the atrocious behavior of the man she's married to, we do feel bad for her given everything he's put her through. Carter, knock it off! such as locking her away in a mental hospital. Connie D'Amico is one of those characters who could be redeemed, but likely won't. Connie is your average teenage mean girl stereotype for almost the entirety of the series. She's seen as being the mean person who bullies Meg at school in the earlier seasons, and then goes on to harass Lois in the more recent episodes when Lois begins teaching music classes at the high school. You the only time we learn more about her is when she's dating Chris, when it's revealed that Connie puts so much into being popular, she willingly dates guys who will eventually mistreat her. When Brian does confront her, he makes a comment that Connie is only her looks, and eventually even her stepdad won't touch her, before she rushes from the room in tears. You're gonna be a worn out, chalky skin, burlap sack that even your stepdad won't want. We know her father did pass away, so maybe Brian was right that Connie is abused at home, which is a lot of the reason why she attacks others like Meg. Next is our youngest and most destructive Griffin, Stewie. Thank you. When the world is mine, your death shall be quick and painless. Once a baby bent on world domination, he's mellowed out quite a bit and is now just a baby with a bit of anger and a really flamboyant personality. Take your juicy sweatpants and your dirty pillow from home and your bucket of coke and get the hell out of my sight. Honestly, although he doesn't want to take over the world or kill his mother anymore, he still is pretty ruthless with insults and burns. Stewie, hold my hand. No, thank you. I prefer to die giving you the finger. And although he doesn't seem to hate his mother anymore, he does go out of his way to insult her and Peter and cause problems for them whenever he can. You got a minute for your daddy? Get out of here, you spineless oaf! He isn't a saint, but he does try to help Chris be a better and more successful person, encouraging him to date and to stand up to being bullied. I heard that from your mom while I was doing her. You're a butt, baby. He also shows that he truly loves Brian, risking his own life a few times to save the canine from a rushing car or from Penelope. Stay away from my dog. He has a lot of growing up to do, which makes sense given the fact that he's a baby, but there is the possibility that he becomes a better person as he gets older. That said, we had to dock his ranking a good bit just to balance out his earlier character with his recent one. Those attempts to take over the world and kill his mom definitely had to weigh his morality down a good bit, but we will give him credit for evolving his personality for the better. James Woods is next on our list. Well, well. A trespasser on my property. Vain, prideful, and driven to destroy. Get out of my house right now! He does eventually try to make amends, but he did attempt to ruin Peter's life. All because there weren't any air holes in his crate. Well, I locked you in a wooden crate and forgot to put an air hole in it. Forgot to put an air hole in it. Which, to be honest, we understand his anger over. Identity theft is not a small crime, and harassing the whole Griffin family on top of it was not the classiest way to go. Luckily, James Woods is always able to be stopped thanks to his love of candy. Next is Joyce Kinney, an ambitious reporter. She fights for the spotlight with Tom and does what she can to succeed. Welcome, Joyce. Thanks, Tom. Wow, you sound crazy nervous. She does manipulate Lois into telling her sensitive information and then embarrasses her on the local news. 
but we can see her reasoning. Being humiliated in front of the entire student body can cause someone to be vindictive. Loretta Brown is next. You name the time and the place, little Nick. <laughs> A cheating wife who fans were happy to see go, she didn't contribute much. This marriage is over. Well, that's just fine, Cleveland. She constantly criticized Cleveland in earlier episodes, claiming he wasn't really a man because he avoided confrontation. I need a real man, and Lord knows that ain't you. Her cheating was made all the worse since it was with a close friend of her husband's, and she can't even use the excuse that it was in the heat of the moment, seeing as how she flirted with him prior to the act and thus encouraged it. Yeah, you go in and get that. Show that fishy who's boss. We would like to put Kevin Swanson higher, but hear us out. A former soldier and once his father's pride and joy in the earliest seasons, we don't see much of him through the series. We know that he wasn't the most stable before he began his service, randomly shouting in anger in the middle of sentences like his father. It was a surprise that he came back to the show at all after we believed he was dead in Iraq, but this is where his character gets the most muddled. Son, you're alive! Oh, and I stayed up all night writing dead kid jokes. He deserted the army, lied about being dead to everyone, including his family, and began to spiral downwards from there. Kevin made another attempt on his life last night. He drank two bottles of dish soap. Any interactions with him now shows him as an incredibly toxic individual willing to die by lighting himself on fire while someone streams it online. Can you hold my phone and point it over this way? I want to live stream my suicide. The only thing we can say is he's never made Meg feel like less of a person and was able to talk to her and date her without making her feel worthless. It actually felt great to be empowered for once. It also helps that he did initially join the service to try and help those in need, seen in flashbacks playing with kids while in uniform. Okay, he has to be added, Kool-Aid Man is next. Seriously, what the hell, dude? Oh yeah! How much structural damage has this guy been responsible for? Imagine having your house or property destroyed just because a couple people said, oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! I'd say that Kool-Aid Man belongs in prison, but he'd probably just bust through the wall and escape. Tilt your head back and I'll lean my liquid down into your mouth. We're throwing in Dr. Hartman next. Possibly the worst doctor in cartoon history, it's routinely shown throughout the series that Dr. Hartman is totally incompetent when it comes to medicine. He also has no respect for anyone's emotions, including his own patients, oftentimes delivering terrible medical news with jokes or shtick. But now onto the cancer. <laughs> You are a cancer, right? You were born in July? In Ratings Guy, it's revealed that Dr. Hartman is the worst doctor working at the hospital. Nurse, who's the worst doctor in this hospital? You are, Dr. Hartman. After drinking, he's admitted to giving someone a back adjustment that he wasn't skilled to do. I was so drunk, I gave someone a back adjustment. I'm not a chiropractor. Really, this guy loses a lot of points, if only for the gross negligence as a medical professional. Am I completely paralyzed? I'm afraid of ghosts. Next is Lois Griffin. Early in the show, it was nice to see her stand up for herself against Peter's reckless behavior. But as the show has gone on, she's just gotten more out of control. She tolerates Peter and his antics, but chances are it was only because it was a comfortable situation and not because of love. I can't carry my money in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her money. We're not saying that Peter and Lois never loved each other, but since they've both cheated on one another a few times, it's hard to see that now. The safety word is banana. I love you. Lois is also a horrible mother, openly putting her daughter down every chance she gets. On top of that, Lois occasionally falls down the rabbit hole of poor and compulsive behavior, such as phases where she begins partying hard and neglecting her family to shoplifting. She also forces herself on Peter several times, specifically when he decides to embrace abstinence. I am gonna have regular sex with you whether you like it or not. Moving on to our favorite cynical mutt, Brian. That's the problem with this world. Too many people go over Board with what they believe. He starts off as the voice of reason in the house earlier in the season. Hey, barkeep, whose leg do you have to hump to get a dry martini around here? A pretty funny gag being that the family dog is the most mature and insightful member of the family. Eventually, this shifted more towards him being an intellectual with a fondness for alcohol, but in later episodes, he becomes a self-righteous, smug caricature. He's desperate for validation and does whatever he can to sound superior. 
He lies about being more successful than he is just to get laid, and had hidden a lot of horrible things from the family. As Quagmire points out, Brian constantly hits on his best friend's wife, the man who pays for his food and rescued him from certain death. You constantly hit on your best friend's wife, the man pays for your food and rescued you from certain death. He may not abuse the kids the way Peter and Lois do, but he does allow the abuse to happen. Brian even neglects and uses his own son Dylan once his son starts rising to fame, encouraging Dylan to literally hold a gun to his head on a kid's show. Sometimes I just want to put this gun in my mouth. He also purposefully infects Chris and Stewie with herpes and sleeps with Meg despite the fact that she's underage. Then again, technically he's younger, but not in dog years. Brian has certainly fallen from grace over the years, which is a bit of a shame because the original character was far more likable and in our opinion, well written. Last of the Griffins is Peter. Given the fact that the show focuses on Peter and his character is the most over the top, it's nearly impossible to rank his actions. If only for the fact that it's difficult to take everything he does seriously because his actions, no matter how awful or ridiculous, never seem to have an effect on anything in the grand scheme. You led me right to him. All right, now help me grind their horns into boner pills. On one hand, Peter is another bad parent. He not only puts his children and wife down, but almost anyone else he can. He is a totally manipulative and terrible father who demeans, degrades, and abuses his family, specifically Meg. I mean, he literally chases her around with farts. I suppose on the flip side, he's routinely shown on and off as being there for his family, but his behavior is really all over the place. He cheats on his wife, has blown up hospitals, and has shot his friends on multiple occasions. Peter once injected his own baby, Stewie, with anabolic steroids. Oh my god, what the hell happened to Stewie? Yeah, it looks good, doesn't he? And even when Peter tries to do the right thing, for instance when confronting his son's bully, he handles it in an atrocious way. He ruthlessly beats the 13-year-old bully to a bloody pulp in his own bedroom. We understand that Peter suffers from a mental handicap. Fire truck, fire truck, fire truck, fire truck, what color are those red fire trucks? You know, being just under the line. But it doesn't give the excuse to blow the family's money on gags and rob banks. He may be entertaining to watch, but he's an awful husband and father and a horrible friend to have. Lois, you should just let those wounds get infected. It'll teach him a lesson about being tough. Bertram is next on our list. Victory shall be mine! Stewie's sinister sibling from another parent, he's shown he's willing to do anything to take Stewie out, even if it means traveling back in time to be sure Stewie was never born. He's obsessive and driven just like his brother, but unlike Stewie, he's willing to put his own life on the line to take out his target. In many ways, he's exactly like Stewie used to be before his character transitioned away from wanting world domination. Next, we have Diane Simmons. On the surface, a career woman that doesn't like to hire girls prettier than her. Below the surface, a cold and calculating murderer of multiple people. We can sympathize that her career ended and she felt like she had been humiliated, but that hardly excuses the fact that she was willing to take out anyone that hurt her and frame Tom in the process. James Woods is dead, Tom goes to prison. Nice and easy. Definitely a sociopath. Now, what can we say about Glenn Quagmire? Mom, you want this three-way to happen, you're gonna have to change your tone. Yes, one of the funniest characters on the show for his over-the-top antics, but if we're really digging into the morality of his character... I didn't feel anything. But you did! Glenn has a lot of serious problems. It's not his promiscuity in and of itself that makes him villainous. It's his perverted and predatory nature that truly ranks him towards the lower end of the list. His behavior in reality would make him one of the most dangerous types of sex offenders, preying on women in a lot of sick and twisted ways all throughout the series. <laughs> Alright. In one episode, he asks Death to leave Joan's body, presumably to satisfy some necrophilic urge. Can you leave that body here for another five minutes? He spiked his date Brooke's drink and attempted to drag her body to another location. In addition to those darker moments, Quagmire is also hooked up with Cleveland's wife and constantly tries to make a move on Lois despite being friends with her husbands. Would you just sit down and go to the bathroom already? Quagmire is another character with a sort of dual personality on the show, as he's often portrayed as helpful, loyal, and even strongly compassionate in certain episodes. But you really can't overlook his worst deeds. Who else but Quagmire? Giggity, 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 let's have sex. 
Getting down to the end of the list, Carter Pewterschmidt is next. Lois's mean-spirited father is definitely one of the most cruel characters on the show. Totally heartless and sadistic, he actually takes joy in the misery of others. For example, he's pretended to adopt orphans just to speed away in his car last minute before they could get in. Okay, I guess you don't want a new family, toys and a puppy. All for his own amusement. That is really sick. He's also especially cruel to Peter, who he torments whenever he gets the opportunity. Yeah, I'm going to kill you. His goals seem to be to make money, ruin his daughter's marriage, and find ways to torment anyone he can for fun. And in one episode, it's revealed that he's actually hiding the cure for cancer and has been since 1999. All because he wants people to spend money on treating cancer. There's far more money to be made in treating a disease than in curing it. Carter seems like a genuine sociopath without emotions and actually takes it to the extreme by being sadistic to boot. Who could forget the radical baby, Penelope? It appears I'll have to kill him myself. We're horrified to think what this girl will grow up as. She's used weapons of mass destruction even making a game of it, has killed her own mother, and even tried to kill Brian to be with Stewie without anyone getting in the way. She died. She was taking a tub and somebody came in and cut her head off. Brian said it best when he described her as making chaos for the sake of chaos. This girl, she just creates chaos for the sake of chaos. Finally, moving on to the most evil. I'd say that it was a tough call, but it kind of wasn't. We're giving the gold medal of evil to Herbert. Holy moly. It must be my birthday. Really, it doesn't need much of an explanation. Herbert's entire character is based around him being a child predator. He fought in World War II, but really that doesn't matter. He's a dangerous predator who methodically stalks preteen boys, and his relaxed personality makes young people let their guards down. Herbert does free Chris from their German neighbor, but he still tries to groom Chris whenever they interact. Herbert, you're a monster. A hilarious, hilarious monster. Oh no! There's no police here to help me! But what do you think? Who do you think is the most twisted evil character in Family Guy? Hit that notification bell and binge our full Good to Evil playlist where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite shows, cartoons, and movies. Also, our new gaming channel, 1UP Binge, has video game themed Good to Evil episodes, so make sure to subscribe over there. But most importantly, stay wicked.